I went to CVC the first 10 years of its existence, from second grade through 12th grade. And then I was gone for about 15 years. And when I moved back, there were new buildings and new campuses, and the school was huge compared to when I had left. No, back in those days, we'd, it was hard to visualize it would grow to this extent. God has blessed us tremendously. There's just no getting around it. It's almost unbelievable in 35 years that we have all that we have around here. I, I knew some of the founders, some of those dreamers, and uh, their faith. And for that reason, I, I believe that God had a big dream for this community. I think the Lord just worked in their hearts to accept and to plan for this. Everything just came together. You could just see the Lord wanted this thing to happen. It's cool to see that we were pioneers and we stuck to it. And in this year, 35th anniversary, I think it's a good chance to stop and reflect how God has brought us where we are and how he has used people, uh, men, and, men and women of God, to make that come to pass. The more people have started uh, moving in decided they wanted to begin a school. We were established and we've been established for a long time, uh, Hanford Christian. And uh, I happened to be a president of the board around that time that these things started kicking off. In uh, 1973, I was chairman of the board. We had decided to put together a committee to look into establishing a elementary school and a high school. Five men came to our house for a first meeting. And uh, we went out and obtained pledges at that time and after a certain amount of pledges we decided yes we could go ahead and uh, begin building. John Grimius was the one who looked for land in Visalia what was available and the challenges of finding the right property that would suit us and suit the city. But that biggest challenge was to convince people when there's nothing there to have a vision to see that that can be something. And you know, the interesting thing is this high school sitting on land that at one time was just a cotton field. In a real sense, building the buildings were the easy part, but uh, the challenge was transforming farmland into a, a school site. I came to Central Valley Christian in 1982. This campus here in Visaya was just being built. I arrived in July and was given a hammer and told to climb up on the roof and we've got work to do. Um, planted trees, did a lot of that kind of thing. That first elementary building, uh, I remember helping put the roof on that thing. So there was, there was a lot of volunteer help in getting it done. Pouring concrete was a lot of volunteer labor. And I have to add that uh, it was a good experience. There was a, a sense of unity and, and cooperation and, and, and camaraderie. And we got to know people, meet people from other church communities that we're soon going to become part of the school community. And, um, and of course, uh, the fact that Mother's Club came out with coffee and goodies about 10 o'clock in those mornings, uh, that helped also, yeah. <laughs> we decided to meet in First Christian Reformed Church at the time. It was kindergarten through sixth grade. We met in the Sunday school rooms. The space was a real challenge and finding place like at recess for the kids to play because all we had was the parking lot. So we kind of had to make our own fun. There was a yard, but that was about it. So it was, it was difficult. They did their best and I have to commend them for it. Hanford Christian really stepped forward to help us with materials and stuff. Just into the 80s, we put together the idea for a Christian high school. After we did the initial vote to start the, to start the high school, there were people that did not support that. And uh, so I would go meet with them. And it was interesting that many of them, even though they didn't vote for it, were willing to support it. To start up something, you know, there's a huge investment initially. And uh, to get that payoff, uh, we had to work hard to, to get our name out in that community because we were the new kid on the block. Well, that was probably the biggest challenge I had was to convince people that they should send their kids to this fledgling little school, especially the high school. And we encouraged our kids to think of being a pioneer that's starting out something small, something new, 
and sometimes we have to make sacrifices for it. We're going to keep on digging. It might be hard pan right now, but we'll get that seed down there and it's, it's going to grow. Although I'm amazed at first class, there was real dedicated support on the part of the parents and the kids seemed to really enjoy it too. Even though they you know, originally intended to go to some big high school somewhere, they came here and they made it work. They put their spirit into it and make it work. So some of those early teachers, they had to do a wide variety of activities also. It wasn't just coming in and teaching social studies or teaching math. They taught many different subjects and were involved with many activities and so forth. And so I think the staff here, we were very cohesive, very um, dedicated to, you know, making this place a, a, a place to be proud of, a place that certainly, uh, of course, uh, would glorify God. When you work each day with teachers who are passionate about their subject area and about their faith, it's just inspiring. I was humbled by my kindergarten experience because I was just awed by the responsibility I had that God gave me to mold these kids for their future in education and their walk with God in school. And I think it's, it's been a, such a blessing to have such godly teachers at CBC and that you know without a doubt that your children are in good hands. You know, it was a small student body and students had to do everything. By that I mean they participated in sports, they participated in music, they participated in drama. The first musical was kind of a turning point. It was the spring of 1992 and the musical was the dream, the vision of CBC's choir director at the time, Clayton Dan Sison. That was quite a challenge. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we were kind of pioneers in, in that respect. And Hank Lenkeek was in charge of chapel, but there was this student duo of Jeff Toss and Mike Music. He spoke the word of the Lord into their hearts, and, and it was amazing to see what the Spirit of God did. You know, kids' hearts were softened, and confessions and reconciliation and the Spirit of God was just so tangible. Being here and so small, we were lucky to have a PE teacher, let alone sports. I was a big fan of, of CBC for, for years and years. In Holland, they always waved with the flags, you know. So we said, I'm going to do that too. And so we did that quite a bit. And we had a lot of fun. You know, we were just starting out. So there wasn't tons of things offered. Um, but for a little school, we offered quite a bit. I think the change in the mindset was that we're a small school, not just a small school, but we can be a small school that can do great things.
I firmly believe in, in covenant education. And I, I think that that's something that I saw God at work in, in this community of good, solid families coming together with that one dream of raising their children in that fertile soil of God's Word and Spirit, and then, well, hopefully sending them off and, and, and pursuing whatever God would want them to do. They still love the Lord and they want to serve Him. And some of the, the most exciting interviews I've had is with former alumni bringing their kids to school and say, I want my kids here. Yeah, that's cool. Like I can say I went to CBC, my kids went to CBC. I'm hoping I can say my grandkids go to CBC. Sometimes we have 10 or 12 cousins all at CBC and other times it's a brand new family. And it's exciting to see how parents want to give their children a Christian education and volunteer their help at CBC. This last time I was at Grandparents Day, uh, I had to have a map in order to show me where all the grandchildren were. We had 15 grandchildren in grade school. Now it's really cool to see that you have people from all over the valley and all over, you know, different um, denominations. And to show them, no, we're not just a Dutch school. We're a Christian school for all Christians. They're seeing CBC is not only a Christian school, it's a school that you get great education. And that was really, a, I felt, a turning point for CBC. The thing I remember most fondly is the people that I've met over the years. The people that, who have dedicated their lives to Christian education, have been so generous. I see former students on the school board, Mother's Club, Booster's Club. Um, it's very exciting to see their dedication to Christian education. The people at CVC and in the school community are very, very generous. Generous with their money and finances, but also generous with time and energy and willingness to work at whatever needed to be done. I was the first Mother's Club president. can remember some of those early Mother's Club meetings of trying to start up the fall festival and such things. It always amazes me when they have that uh, the sale, the auction, how much money they raise. You have these school sales now that are raised 400000 and this and that. When, when we started, we had the school sale in Hanford, and uh, the best things that would sell would be a shovel or a hose, right? <laughs> but anyway, we, we raised like thirty five, forty thousand dollars $40,000, and that was a, we thought we really rang a bell, right? Then you can see there's a good support for our school. Our theme verse this year is taken from Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. I've been in Christian education my whole life, and I have seen the significance and importance of keeping Christ at the center of all things. Plants, trees, everything, they bring their roots down to get food and nourishment, and they grow. And as Christians, we have to plant our roots in the Bible and in Christ to be able to grow. God makes that promise that, you know, we're rooted in Christ. We will grow. We will bear fruit. There's no question about it. That's guaranteed. But it's, it's, it's key that our homes, as well as the school and the churches, are linked together with that one purpose. We believed in that. Strongly believed in rooting our children in Christ in those formative high school years when we feel like they can get persuaded so easily to go other directions. There's so much in this world today that is just trying to divert their attention from God that they need to be firmly rooted in Christ, that, that they stand solid and they're not tossed by every wind of doctrine. CBC is a God thing. If you look at the number and the size of school we are, the facilities that we have, all that we offer here in terms of the academics, the sports, everything else, that could only happen through the power of God working through His people to make this come about. I'm just very thankful for my years at CBC. They're a part of my life that I wouldn't give up for anything. 
We can't say thank you enough to no. God for what he has given to each one of us here. For the blessing, you know, for our children and our grandchildren and for generations to come. Praise be to God for what he has done. Praise be to God for, for the staff that's committed to this dream, for, for the community that's committed to this dream. What we have here I think is special and um, it's because of what God has done in the lives of people here and in this community. He uses this to build his kingdom. You know, I'm convinced of that. I see that every day.